Okay, so welcome back to uh, video three of week nine of Computers in the Studio. In the last video, we went over importing options as well as the composition window. Now we're going to go over another really important part of uh, the After Effects workflow, which is the layers and the timeline uh, panel down along the bottom. So as stated previously, layers uh, is a very similar concept to how it is in Photoshop. The difference, however, is that so when you click on a layer, you'll see that it, a, it highlights this layer, but then underneath, you may see that there's this kind of um, arrow, and clicking on it will then open up this kind of drop down menu. And so from this, you'll see that there's a transform, and then there's also a layer styles menu, or um, option to select and what these do are they are uh, properties about the specific layer that can then be edited through the use of the timeline or from uh, this directly so remember when we imported we made sure that layer styles were still editable you'll see here that those layer styles are all here the drop shadow the pattern overlay and blending options are still here. One thing to go go. Uh, one thing to note when it comes to layer styles is that you cannot have two of a specific layer style applied to one layer. So that means if you have, say, multiple drop shadows applied in a Photoshop file, you definitely want to make sure that you're doing something where one becomes rasterized and then you're layering one on top. If you want to have the effect of both, because uh, After Effects will only take whichever one is the top, um, the top um, styling. So something to keep in mind definitely when using layer styles and importing them into After Effects. Similarly with Transform, uh, these are all editable attributes. So as we may have shown earlier, you can move from within the window itself but you can also edit these properties here. So if I highlight, say, um, maybe not anchor point, if I highlight, say, position, you'll see that I get this kind of pointer with two arrows sticking out next to it. And now if I click, it becomes simply the two arrows. And if I drag left, it will increase the value. And if I drag right, it'll decrease the value. So this is if you want to get really specific with the placement of your um, of your element. So similarly, up down, and scale it. Or you can also rotate it. Similarly, with editing value properties not only can you not not only can you drag you can also actually just type in so if i wanted to type in 100 that would work as well similarly here if i wanted to type in maybe 30 that could happen as well um, these these type in fields are also pretty um also a little more complex in that you can actually even type in uh, mathematics in order to get a value. So let's say if I did it, if I had maybe a rotation of 100, right, like previously, but I also wanted to just rotate it a little more, I could do plus 20, and you may see that now, it now says uh, 120, and so it just did it right then and there. And then similarly now, if I wanted to maybe minus 30, can go through and then it will uh, immediately update that way as well. Similarly, um, I would maybe take a moment, pause this video and just go through and maybe take one shape and then at this point um, edit and change kind of the different values that are here, play with you know the opacity and the other things of your pattern overlays or the layer styles that you came in and just get a sense of how to edit these values from within, um, from within the actual layer menu themselves.
Okay, so pause the video and did that. Moving forward, you may see that now there's also this tiny little um, this tiny little stopwatch right here. That is called keyframes, and we will get into that as they relate to the timeline. So first, let's let's talk about the timeline before we come back to this. Really quickly, also to note, because I forgot, if you want to change the visibility of certain things, such as maybe get rid of your layer styles or the actual layer itself, it's the exact same thing as in Photoshop. So talking about the timeline, uh, if you've used any sort of video editing software in the past, a timeline should be pretty, pretty uh, standard. It's also a big thing in Premiere. But simply to go over it in terms of navigating it for those who have never used one prior, the way it works is that there are multiple parts to it. There is this kind of top bar along the top. You'll see that when I kind of go towards the edges, it kind of similarly gets that double arrow. There is these numbers right here, which signify kind of the length of this video. There's another bar underneath, which is called the work area. So you can have the work area be the same as the total time, but it can also be less than that. <coughs> and then along with this, you can also, uh, you'll see that below this, there are different sort of layers to uh, there's a, there are different bars to each kind of layer attached here. So the way that these work in tandem is that this kind of top bar is the time navigator and as you shrink it you'll see that the video kind of expands and so this allows you to kind of magnify into your timeline and get a little more specific and a little more granular about what's along each of these. For the time being it doesn't really need to be that magnified in because we're not really working on anything super specific. However, if you want another way of editing it, you can do it from here along the bottom. Now, the, t the work area, what this means is that this is the total area. Whenever I hit play, it's going to loop to this to 10 seconds. So if I hit play, and I can do that by hitting space, you'll see that it's kind of looping through the entirety of the video. This red line is kind of following along. This isn't really doing much because our video isn't um, isn't super isn't super um, extensive, or it's just a bunch of layers. However it is actually playing. So now if I shorten this top bar right here to maybe say two seconds, mm -hmm. but you'll see that it starts to loop over just these two seconds. For the time being though, you can stretch it out to be as long as 10 seconds. We don't really need to shorten it right now. And finally with this, so this bar represents where in the video this layer is currently visible. So if I go and I grab it from the ends, and you'll see that the that the, uh, double arrow shows up, and I maybe shorten this to one second, right? And then I hit play, you'll see after one second, it completely disappears. That's how this, this bar works. Um, it defines just the visibility of the layer and where it is in the timeline. So I would say maybe take a bit and just kind of mess with mess with this these layer bars and play around with making objects visible and invisible at certain parts of the video. One thing to note, however, is that um, if you wanted to make something visible and then invisible again, you would have to do that via keyframing and not via these layer bars. 
so I will get into that in a sec but definitely hit pause on this video and give yourself some time to just really <coughs> shorten and kind of layer all of these different layers to create just a little bit something more dynamic with your video and so I'm going to take a second and just do this right now so that we can move on to the next bit also if you want to drag your layer to certain parts you can do so by just clicking on it and just dragging and you'll see that now Our video is a little more dynamic. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now that we've gone through just the very basics of how keyframe of how not how keyframing of how the videos and the timeline work, we're going to get into actually keyframing. So I'm going to hit again on this drop down, and then from this. I'm going to click into transform, right, and I have my explosion shape selected. You'll see that there are these properties here, again, anchor, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. But let's say I want to have it change over time, right? Let's say I want it to be positioned here right now, but then at, when it disappears at one second, I want it to be positioned over here. And I want it to shift over in a very gradual manner. I can do that via keyframing. And so I can say what the position should be at zero seconds and what the position should be at one second. And then After Effects will figure out how to get from point one to point uh, two. So to test it out and to show you, I'm going to come over, make sure that you have your seconds, your timeline set to zero seconds. Explosion shape selected, click on your stopwatch under position. And then now I'm going to drag my ruler all the way to one second, which is where this shape disappears. I'm going to move this over here, close to computers in the studio and then stop. So what you'll see some couple of things have now entered into the workspace, right? You have this one dot, you have a line or a vector that's kind of extending out of the shape. Similarly, down here, if you look at, and I can zoom in so that you all can see a little bit more, you'll see that there is a diamond and then another diamond. And so these diamonds represent keyframes, and they show where a keyframe has been placed, and that signifies that there should be a change in position. So if I start over again from the beginning and hit play or spacebar, you'll see that now it starts moving. Keyframes are really cool because they're also um, editable so just because this keyframe is right here doesn't mean I can't just grab it and move it so I can take this and let's say I want to move it to about halfway right and then I want to add another keyframe and then now I want it to be moving back up you'll see that now it's added another keyframe right so for example now it does this. You can also grab keyframes. Yeah, you can just you can grab keyframes and delete them. So for example, with this one, if I wanted to just get rid of this, I can select it and delete it, and now it's just a straight line again. However, I really like that kind of movement, so I'm going to add it back in. You can apply many different types of keyframes or different uh, properties. You can change different properties with keyframes as you see fit. So just because I edited the position doesn't mean that 
I can't also make it rotate while it's doing this, right? So all I would have to do is click on the stopwatch right next to rotation. Go over to maybe the end. And then at this point, change the rotation. And so I'm going to use this way, this method of editing the property, and I'm going to have it rotate twice. And so then now, my shape is just both moving and also rotating. Right? So take a second. Maybe edit um, similarly the explosion shape in the way that I just did and just add a couple keyframes. One thing to note is that you should, after you've clicked this stopwatch, you should not click it again because if I do, you'll, you'll see what happens. It entirely removes the keyframes from the timeline. So definitely keep those, um, keep those within the timeline or keep this selected so that your keyframes stay within the timeline. So this is like a very basic uh, transition. You'll see that it's kind of stays the same all throughout. There is no, you know, it's there is no easing in or kind of easing out or just like a much more subtle and nuanced transition. It kind of is just a pretty robotic point A to point B. So if you would like to um, kind of change the way your transition um, change the speed of your transition and make it a little more dynamic looking. You can do that in two different sorts of ways. You can do that by through something called a keyframe assistant or you can do it through a graph editor. And so <coughs> with, excuse me, with the keyframe assistant, it's pretty pretty much uh, a more standard uh, preset way of doing it. So if I zoom in, I'm going to zoom in pretty much into this specific uh, area of my timeline. I can go over to this, my rotation, and I'm going to right click, keyframe assistant, and I'm going to hit easy ease. And so what you'll notice now is that my keyframes have changed shape to kind of this hourglass. And so what this means is that, and I can't zoom in more to make the keyframes look bigger so you'll just have to notice is that keyframes have two different sides to them. They have this kind of lighter gray side and this darker gray side. And what that means is that there's an easing into the transition and an easing out of the transition. So with this hourglass shape you can have it on one side, on both sides, and when you have it on one side, that means there's only an ease in on either the in or the out, depending on what side is in, it's on. And if there's one on both sides, so it looks like an hourglass, that means there's both easing in and easing out. So if I hit play, you'll see, and it's kind of a little subtle, mm -hmm. you'll see, and it's kind of a little subtle, just the way the rotate slows down as um, mm -hmm. as it ends. So that's keyframe assistant and you can do it for the entirety of all of the keyframes for a property by coming over here or you can do it to one specific keyframe by clicking on the actual keyframe itself and doing it here and you'll see that now this is the only one that has the transition. The final thing or the final way that you can edit a keyframe transition is through the graph editor and so I do that by clicking on this kind of top right button here and you'll see it looks like a graph just hit graph editor and then now I have kind of this display or this look of a graph on my um, on my timeline instead. So if I hit play, you 
you'll see that as I hit play, it kind of <coughs> is going along the line of the graph. This white line denotes the transitioning. So it's a pretty straight transition to the actual, uh, to the farthest right point. And then now as it swings back, it kind of has this curve to make a slightly better, slightly nicer transition. So make sure that you have here edit speed graph selected and edit value graph selected and what these do is that they allow you oh, I guess you can only have one selected at a time huh um, have speed graph selected is that this will now change the transition itself so now if I try and do it, you'll see that it's kind of a little jumpier because it's hitting that one point right here and then coming back down and ending. You can also change your rotate. So if I select position, you'll see that this is the easing in transition for my position keyframes. But if I hit rotate, it has its own sort of uh, graph that I can now select and edit. So if I bring this point in, I can also move these points up and down. And you'll see that the speed increases and the influence increases, meaning that <coughs> it just takes higher priority. So now, As you see, because this is way higher in terms of its influence, it doesn't really rotate until it hits this point and then it follows through with the rest of the rotation. Okay? So that is all in terms of for uh, video three of week nine of computers in the studio. In this video, we went over layers and we went over the timeline. So please uh, check Canvas where you will see the exercise you should complete after this video. And thank you.